calling meeting to order at 6.36 p.m. And um, we do need to adopt the agenda. So I'm moving. Is there a second? Oh, second. Thank you. Moved by Walter, seconded by Tiago. Thank you. Do we have minutes? Do we have minutes? Okay. Okay. It's okay. Then we'll move on. Up. Well, we'll move on to our introductions. The first introduction, I'm kind of old hat at this. Um, I'm Daria Hardiman. I am co-chair of Arts and Culture. I've been on the board for about eight years now, going in, into my, I guess I'm going into my ninth year. And um, I've been co-chair going into my third, maybe my fourth year. Um, and I am an artist by trade. I am a performing and visual artist. Of photographs artists. Um, I've been living in this community since 1997. And I think that's all I'm going to say in terms of introductions. We ask for you to just um, give a short introduction of who you are, something about yourself, Don't not about your uh, organization yet, necessarily. We just know that with arts and culture, um, knowing who's in the room is always a good thing because collaboration is key uh, with what we do. So um, with that said, I want to introduce my brand new co-chair, Tina Lumley. Uh, my name is Tina Lumley and um, I am the co-chair of the Arts and Culture Committee. Um, I about 13 years uh, and very civic minded and um, arts and culture is my passion. And with that, I pass to Tiago. And everyone just pass to someone else. All right, so I'm Tiago Keel. I'm a new member of the board. Uh, I'm a high schooler. I go to Collegiate, which is a school on the Upper West Side. And yeah, uh, hoping to learn, and this is my first official committee meeting, so glad to be here, and I guess I'll pass it to Walter. Congratulations, Tiago. Uh, Walter T. Alexander, um, a member of Arts and Culture Committee, on the board since 2018, in Harlem since 1978, in the same building, the same apartment. Um, I might now be more of a patron of the arts than an artiste, but I do have artist background. Um, and I love working on this committee. And I'll pass it to Martin Collins. Thank you, Walter. Good evening, everyone. Martin Collins uh, from the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance, where I serve as the Uptown Arts Stroll Coordinator. I'll pass it to Michael Palm. Thank you, Martin, and thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Palma. I'm a community resident, a second generation community resident here in West Harlem. Uh, served on the community board on and off since 1992. Uh, I have a master in fine arts from Columbia University. Um, and I am not only my training and background is in arts administration, uh, especially in the theater. Uh, but also I'm an artist uh, and I've known to uh, photograph the cultural happenings here in, in, in Upper Manhattan and, and especially in Harlem. And with that, I will pass it along to my sort of partner in crime, Michael K. Unthank. Mike? Hello, how are you all? Good to see you. I am Mike Unthank. As uh, Michael said, and we are partners in the West Harlem Arts Alliance and trying to get that off the ground. And also, I am the uh, interim chair at the Children's Art Carnival, trying to get that off the ground. So um, I've been a resident here in um, Hamilton Heights for, uh, I don't know, since 1984 and a New Yorker since 1977, Summer of Sam. There you go. 
Uh, so I'll pass it to Ryan. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Pinchot. I'm an educator at the Hispanic Society Museum and Library. I'm a PhD candidate at Rutgers, and I'm a CB9 resident, too. <clears throat> Uh, I will pass to, I see a Carl here. All right. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Everyone. <clears throat> My name is Carl Reynoso. I'm a CB9 resident. I've been here about 47 years of my entire life. And, uh, um, I'm into the arts. I'm into music. I'm into dance. I'm into a lot of different things, but one thing I'm mostly into is Harlem and my community. So hello, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Who do you wish to uh, someone else? I think Jana and Jana and Juan are left. I believe. Juan Hi. and Ilana. Go ahead. Someone. Go ahead, Jana. <laughs> Well, I can take it if nobody else is going. Okay. Hi, my name is Jana Renstrom, and I'm with the Cota Alliance, which is at 43 St. Nicholas Place. Uh, this is a nonprofit for gender equality and women's empowerment. And what it has to do with the arts is that we have a beautiful building which we want to use for arts. Um, and also, I have some experience with uh, organizing. I love arts of all kinds, but especially music. And uh, uh, I have some experience since 2002. Um, I'm from Finland originally, so... Uh, we have another organization called Finland Center Foundation, which resides in the same building. And since 2002, in other locations, we've organized all kinds of grassroots uh, music events and arts events. And so that's what we want to continue to do there. Uh, and would love to collaborate with uh, the rest of the community there. And thank you so much for Western um, Harlem Arts Alliance for collaborating with us on our upcoming October arts exhibit for women artists from West Harlem. Welcome okay. to that. Great, thanks. Juan, you're on mute. Hi, my name is Juan Colmenares. I am a high school teacher. I teach English, uh, American literature, 11th grade. Um, I've been uh, an artist my whole life, in a sense. I draw and I photograph things and um, I studied architecture two years at uh, CCNY back in 1945. Um, and I gave it up because I couldn't do math. So mm. I became an English teacher. I love books. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Elana? Hi. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, oh okay. I, I don't know if I was still muted. Um, so Alana Mercado, I've uh, been on the community board since I think 2017. I'm a member of this committee and of the um, housing and land use committee. I have a visual arts background. I'm a proud um, alumni of LaGuardia High School for the Arts. And um, I'm from the Bronx originally. I've been living here since 2006 and I'm an attorney. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Please, add, in the chat, add your name, all of the guests, please add your name, the name of your organization, your position in the organization, and to choose your email address, which is very, very important, so that you can be added to our distribution list to receive your information and your telephone number. Oh. <laughs> yeah, please do. Please do. <laughs> yes, good evening all. My name is Victor Edwards. I'm currently the chair of the board. I uh, just wanted to sit in and, and take a gander at the new committee members and my new co-chair. And uh, we have a lot to do. There's a lot of great art in this community. And I'd like to see if we can coordinate a lot of those different organizations together. So welcome to all. I appreciate you being here. To my Walter and Juan, you must stay on camera to be to be counted as present. That goes for all community board members. You must stay on camera to be counted as present. Well, do I, I'll uh, give me a few minutes and I'll get on, on my computer. I was having problems with the Zoom on my phone, but I'm not near my computer, but I'll get on there. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, one, 
thing that I did overlook um, with the permission of the committee members, I did need to add uh, Ryan from Ryan uh, Pinshot from the Hispanic Society uh, on presentations. Oh, okay. Under presentations. Do you have any um, other members? No. Yeah. Thank you. I'm listed in the chat as a guest. Shouldn't I be our panelist? Yes, yes but uh, I'll have a uh, um, Madison. 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 She's running between two meetings. When she comes back over, we'll, we'll upgrade you to a panelist, Walter. Okay. Sorry, Walter. Um, so now we're going to move on to announcements. Uh, I have this just as a standing announcement. Um, probably everybody here knows, but I like to just say out loud uh, who we are, what we do, and the committee contact information. Um, who we are, Community Board 9, we are a quasi-city agency um, who uh, the 50 of us compete are interviewed and are appointed by the borough president and the city councilmen um, for our seats. There are 50 seats in every neighborhood and we are the voice of the community to the elected officials. Um, that's what we do. We advocate here on Arts and Culture, we advocate for artists, we advocate for art in general um, and artists specifically and organizations. We do whatever we can to bring art, to help art, um, and to encourage art in the arts. Um, and our contact information, uh, it's, I always say this because it, we are a volunteer agency. Um, so we just want to make sure that everyone, we have co-chairs to make sure that things get covered. Um, my personal email is my name twice, daria, daria at yahoo.com, D-A-R-I-A, D-A-R-I-A at yahoo.com. We also have a um, committee dedicated email, which is cb9arts, A-R-T-S, cb9arts at yahoo.com and tina's email is tlumley at hotmail.com i would add this added to the chat okay and so we're going to move on to our presentations and senator clary is that it is it clear or clary yeah. I don't know if she's issue, but yeah, I don't think she's here yet. So we let's, will let's go to the next person. Yes, you want to you want to do this? Okay, um, present could be is resolution for arts and culture committee. Michael Palmer, you're on. Hi, great. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm here in support of a resolution that we've submitted to or that was submitted to the arts and culture committee, and I'm hoping that maybe oh, Madison yeah. might have sent the resolution out to all the members before the meeting so that it does not, everyone has had an opportunity to review it and read it. Uh, like most resolutions, uh, they are specifically written and designed to be self-explanatory uh, with the whereas is explaining the sort of circumstances of the situation uh, for which the resolution speaks for a direct uh, um, either action or, or resolve uh, in light of uh, the, um, uh, the issue at hand. Um, I, am I uh, not correct in, in, know, uh, in believing that everyone has had an opportunity to and see it and read new, it? We have some new members that just joined today. If you wouldn't mind giving a very short recap, that would be great. Yeah, well, I would even better uh, like to screen, uh, share a screen where everyone can actually see it and read it. Uh, it's not a very long resolution. Uh, like I said, it, it sort of explains itself. Um, 
As most, there we go. That's it. Uh, if you want, I can give you, I can give a little background to it. But I also want to, uh, at this moment, recognize that the the chair of the West Alamance Alliance is also here, and uh, Michael Unthank. And if he has anything to say uh, or want to impart while I give my presentation, Michael, please don't hesitate to sort of chime in. Very good. Um, this resolution is um uh, in support of uh columbia university who is our partner in the community with respect to uh, the community benefits agreement and providing or speaking to uh the development of arts and culture within community district nine. Oh boy did you hear that yeah i'm sorry guys but it is it is uh, <laughs> quite, quite uh, biblical on, outside. Um, so uh, the context of this, and especially for, uh, for the younger members or those members who have not been in the community very long, Columbia University joined with the community in agreeing to a community benefits agreement as part of the development that has happened in Manhattanville. Uh, I do want to state that and reiterate that this is a partnership, the community with Columbia in addressing uh, issues in uh, that impact the community uh, because of the development of, of the Manhattanville project, which I would say is probably uh, probably more than halfway complete at this point, although they still have uh, a lot more uh, to go. Uh, one of the promises, and, and everyone should realize that in the early days, we negotiated this community benefits agreement, that is Community Board 9 and Columbia, in a series of meetings and charrettes, of which I participated, but not only I, many other members of Community Board 9 that I would like to recognize, including uh, the uh, first uh, co-chair and chair of the, of the Arts and Culture Committee, which was myself, and Savannah Bailey McLean. Uh, I would also like to recognize Linda Walton, uh, who was uh, also uh, the head of the Harlem Arts Alliance, as well as uh, worked for many years at the uh, Harlem Empowerment Zone. Also, uh, Diane Wilson, uh, who is I was a community board member, uh, now is is in education and editing in the editing field, <clears throat> as well as the late and great. Uh, uh, Dr. Vicki Golson and uh, the former chair of Community Board 9, Jody Reyes Montblanc. Uh, we negotiated and put into uh, the community benefits agreement uh, a section with respect to arts and culture. One of the elements of that uh, uh, section um, stated that after uh, completing a certain amount of the uh, development project at Columbia University uh, or at the Manhattanville site, um, and once a, a, an organization was established uh, by the West Harlem Development Corporation, uh, Columbia University would dedicate uh, 5,000 square feet of space for the said organization uh, and to provide uh, the community with access to space not only within the 5,000 uh, uh, square foot uh, for the organization, but also throughout its campus. It was recognized at the time that there was a lot of space that Columbia University had <clears throat> and that it <clears throat> sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, sort of coveted, uh, not shared with the community. A lot of space that went empty for most, most part of the year. And so they had agreed to not only provide 5,000 square of uh, dedicated space within the development area, which is, uh, that is Manhattanville, but also to provide uh, access to its other spaces through a sort of in-kind agreement. This particular resolution speaks to uh, directly now that the West Harlem Arts Alliance has been, is being established, is established to a large degree, uh, having uh, first received its uh, a bulk of its funding last May and has started programming, but also more, more importantly, started to lay down the foundations of its, of its organizations with all the sort of statutory requirements. And we are now looking for a home, 
a place to grow and a place to conduct our activities. And so this resolution, this particular resolution speaks to the uh, commitment to provide that space to the organization, that now being the West Harlem Arts Alliance, in order to begin in earnest its programming. And so uh, as you read it, uh, going from the top to the bottom, you will see a, a sort of chronological uh, and sort of backstory uh, in the whereas is to, to the, um, with this uh, particular uh, resolution. And then the sort of two resolution items at the bottom, one speaks to specifically to uh, asking Columbia University to now provide that 5,000 square foot uh, footage to, to the West Harlem Arts Alliance, but also, uh, and secondly, and as importantly, realizing that we are partners and, and they are, you know, again, developing the site and trying to sort of reallocate their own uh, physical spaces amongst uh, their own uh, um, uh, 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 university uh, schools, uh, uh, but also to, uh, and, and a lot of uh, uh, the business schools moving in, they're sort of switching spaces a lot, and also to give an opportunity for the new uh, chair of uh, Columbia to address the issue. Um, we had asked that, that if they could not immediately find that 5,000 square uh, feet of space, to provide a temporary space right now uh, for at least a couple of years until they, uh, you know, the dust has settled and everyone is sort of where they should be in order for them to then allocate uh, 5,000 square feet within the Manhattanville uh, area. And so that is what this, uh, that's sort of the backstory behind this resolution. Um, I believe the resolution is very clear and, and, and simple and very direct. Uh, and uh, Michael, I don't know if you have anything else you want to say, anything that I have been uh, may have been remiss in mentioning. Uh, oh, sorry. No, I don't really have very much more to say. I think that was it's fine as you say. I think the uh, resolution does speak for itself. The uh, the West Harlem Arts Alliance uh, uh, is developed has been developed to really serve the artists and the arts organizations in our district. And our district includes um, uh, the Manhattanville development, uh, which I don't know, I'm sure everybody has seen it, knows, you know, knows the scope, size and scope of it, as well as other resources, many other resources that we have, uh, for example, uh, City College, as well as a wealth of uh, arts organizations that are really quite, um, quite outstanding in terms of their, their track record of service. So, uh, in uh, asking for the uh, for the uh, for Columbia to uh, provide the support that it's uh, promised, uh, the West Harlem Arts Alliance would, in turn, uh, kind of coordinate that space, make sure artists, arts organizations, the arts community, and also residents intersecting there, uh, um, you know, use that as a space and keep it active and um, and as a resource for the community. So, I mean, I think that's pretty much it in terms of what we want to see happen right now. And uh, uh, having the space would certainly enable us to stabilize our uh, situation and be able to start putting some real strong uh, and permanent pieces in place in terms of our services so far as the West Harlem Arts Alliance. So, thanks, Michael, and thank you, everyone. I have a question. Um, isn't that ex the, uh, the agreement expiring soon? Uh, I don't know who's asking the question, and Walter, I don't know if it's my. Walter. It's Walter. Hi, Walter. I, yeah, but I, I am not the chair, and I don't know. I don't recognize questions unless the chair recognizes them. But I'm I'm more than willing to answer them. Okay, um, I recognize Walter's question. Um, does anyone know the answer? I think it's twenty thirty four. Yeah, the, 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 the community benefits agreement expires 2034, so but we have to get on it. No. Yeah, absolutely. There may be some aspects of the community benefits that, that are expiring, or maybe some commitments within the community benefits that are expiring in their connection with the West Harlem Development Corporation. But certainly, uh, Columbia University is still obligated to fulfill its promise to the community. community. 
and whether it's technical or not, that should not be dependent on that. That should be uh, a promise made. Should be a promise kept, no matter what the you know date of expiration is for for the for the community uh, for from the community benefits agreement. Thank you. Do you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. You said you more had one though. Okay. Um, have you all requested already requested the space already? Have you? Had any conversation with Columbia? That's a that's a very good question. Thank you for asking that. I, I know that I have had one meeting with uh, the uh, uh, Lofton Flowers, uh, and as well as Sade, and we made it very clear that the organization is in the process of establishing itself, and it's practically good and ready to go. All it needs is really a space to begin its operations and, and to begin programming, to have a, a place to do programming. They heard us very loud and clear, uh, and they promised to look into it. And there has been some back and forth with respect to uh, locations and possible locations. Um, and not not any of them within the uh, Manhattanville area as stipulated in the CBG, but certainly a start to uh, to uh, places to sort of begin operations. Uh, some of those fell through, and uh, and we've and they've sort of made promises to to continue the search and look for it. Uh, but I think it's been really about six months since that conversation first started. Um, and, and we believe at this time that, especially with the, the new president coming in, uh, that there really should be a, a vocalization uh, and a recommitment uh, to this effort and we believe this is this is what this uh, resolution will do. It is a sort of reaffirmation of our partnership together in order to uh, complete this. And I, I believe, and they have represented to us that, that they are they are just as eager uh, to make this happen uh, uh, as we are. Uh, but uh, uh, some, you know, Columbia University is a very big organization, and sometimes they they really. Um, uh, need to be refocused on 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 community issues, and I, in, in, in a friendly way, in in a, a collaborative way, and I and I believe this is what this resolution will do, especially uh, with the new president coming in. All right, thank you. Are there any additional questions? I have other questions. Were there, was there were there any more before? I... Okay, yeah. sure. Um, so I just want to be clear because I was writing down questions. Um, so the resolution, I'm, I'm, I'm curious and I, I think you kind of answered, but I still kind of have a question about why a reso. If, if it seems like the conversation is friendly and it seems like they want to get done. Does it seem like they're dragging their feet or like what? And I, and I, and the reason that I ask that is because I've never heard of a resolution being written for a request for space. Um, maybe a, a letter of support, but a reso, I'm curious to whether that's actually even the, the appropriate use of a reso. Um, well, I didn't have a chance to, to check with our parliamentarian about that, but. Um, sure, sure, sure. Um, I, I would say, and uh, Daria, I've been on the community board since 1992. A, a resolution is really um, a way for the community board to communicate the community's request for an issue to be addressed. Whereas a letter of support is really more or less a little bit more insular and, and it really comes from within the, the 50 member board and not necessarily the more than 180,000 uh, community residents. For me, a community uh, resolution speaks from 180,000 community residents and not just the 50 board members that 
uh, is usually represented in a letter of support. And so to the extent that this resolution speaks to a commitment to the community, speaks to uh, the commitment to work together and address uh, the arts and cultural needs of the community, uh, it is holy uh, and, uh, and proper that uh, now that we have a new president, and it's not Lee Bollinger who we're now calling on the carpet, or, or, or rather, uh, we are sort of reaffirming uh, our partnership with the new president and, and making it very clear to the new president that this is a very important aspect of the Community Benefits Agreement. And this is something that the community, the more than 186,000 residents, have been waiting for now for more than 20 years. So this uh, resolution, uh, now that the organiz uh, now the, I can't speak to why it didn't, uh, why the WHDC didn't create the organization sooner. I know that there has been a change in the WHDC, and and they have refocused their attention on on our aspect, our side of the community benefits agreement, those responsibilities that fall within uh, the community uh, 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 to to complete and. I believe that they are, uh, with this new administration, they have committed themselves to that, and they certainly uh, have done that with the uh, creation and incubation of the West Harlem Arts Alliance. Uh, we are trying to address or redress an issue <clears throat> that has been going on for more than 20 years. And so now that uh, uh, the community is ready, uh, uh, the WHDC has seen fit to create the West Harlem Arts, or, or, uh, Arts Alliance. And so uh, there is a very clear sign now to Columbia University that we are ready, willing, and able to complete our ass side of this uh, uh, community benefits agreement. And so again, this resolution speaks directly to that recommitment, that reaffirmation to work together with Columbia University to fulfill uh, uh, an obligation that really should have been addressed or redressed 20 years ago. Thank you. Are there any more questions? questions? One more. Sure. May I? Okay. Go ahead. Do you have one? Yeah. Um, one more. Uh, thank you so much, Michael, um, for sort of clearing that up for me. Um, my This is a concern. This is um, less of a question and more of a concern. Um, I definitely agree that it's time for them to uh, fulfill some of these promises and um, happily, <laughs> uh, happy for it to be an art space. Um, I, my only concern uh, with the Rezo is the request for the entire 5,000 square feet. Um, if there's 5,000 square feet for the entire community um, to write a reso requesting that the entire 5,000 be allocated to just one organization, um, that's that's what that to me that that. Should we, I, I would like to have some discussion about that part. Well, I'm, I'm more than willing to discuss it, but the fact of the matter is, is that uh, they do want to allocate uh, 5,000 square feet to one organization, who better than the West Harlem Arts Alliance. And the other aspect of it, uh, of this is, is that the 5,000 is, is dedicated space that's supposed to go to an organization. There is countless square footage space that they are making available to the whole community, not just 5,000, but I would venture to say over 100,000 square feet dedicated that they can allocate to the community through in kind, uh, an in-kind um, uh, procedure and process. Victor Edwards, who is there with you right now, is aware of this and knows this very keenly, your, your, your chair, that, uh, and we have already availed ourselves, we have already availed ourselves of space. In, in community uh, in, in at Columbia University. And the idea of the CBG was that it not only dedicated 5,000 square footage to an organization, but that it also made access, access. All the other spaces, theaters, halls, rehearsal space that Columbia University has uh, available and is dark most of the time to the community through an in-kind arrangement. 
So, Michael, since you called my name out, I, I'm going to address that. You know yourself, in the past, we've had difficulty getting space for Columbia. It took sure. quite doing for us to get space just for the general board meeting for the forum. Um, I fought with them tooth and nail um, to do that. So I understand what um, Darius is saying about one space, but the entire space going to one organization. We have organizations that might want to do, um, you know, show off work and things of this nature. I, I'm most likely, you know, the organization will be cooperative, but I hear what you're saying. I think that part might need further discussion. I've had issues with space at Columbia several times. Um, I monitor the CBA, as you probably know, for the last five years. And uh, I, I've had personal issues, like I said, even the space we're in now, we pay rent. We pay rent for the space, which I think is ludicrous that an organization like ours has to pay rent to Columbia University for a space they should be in kind given to the, to the community board, right? So I just wanna sure. make sure you understand my position and how Columbia has worked in the past. So I have to agree with Darry on this as far as we need to talk about the full space being allotted to one, one organization. Not to say it won't be, but it needs, it needs discussion. That's all I'm saying. Well, I, I think that if you, uh, having access, I, what, part of our conversation with Columbia is also included, uh, they sort of want one organization to deal with. They can't really deal. They don't have the infrastructure to deal with 15, 20, 30 organizations. And in our conversations with Sade and with Lofton, we say, hey, listen, we'll be happy to be the conduit by which uh, organizations, arts organizations, organizations that are looking for rehearsal space, organizations that are looking for readings, organizations that are looking to uh, for uh, like a room to do a photo shoot or something would come yeah. to us and we would we would navigate or 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 make the request formally with uh, Columbia University and they would allocate spaces. As a matter of fact, one of our first collaborations with Columbia was to do a stage reading in the lobby of, of, um, of the forum right. uh, was a sort of test of that, of that possibility. And they were very much interested, not only in us uh, managing that for them, because again, this is becomes a logistical issue for Columbia, but also for us to help them do some programming. And and the one in mind they had was the Monday j Monday night jazz um, um, uh, events uh, there at the forum, and we said we'd be happy to do that for them. And uh, and so I think that uh, the concern of Community Board Nine. Uh, with respect to the 5,000, I hear you, uh, I understand and uh, uh, the concern with regard to the 5,000 square uh, footage of space, that's not a lot for for uh, an organization to, to manage, especially if we wanted to do programming within uh, the space. <clears throat> but I right. think that the concern of the community board should also be having access to all the other spaces at Columbia University for which this resolution does not speak to. That could be another resolution, or if you want, we, you can, uh, if there's a friendly amendment and, and there's an extra whereas you wanted to put in there that addresses the issue, not only, uh, guys, uh, our access to Columbia University space doesn't stop at 5,000 square feet. It, it, it goes way beyond 5,000 square feet. And what I'm what I'm saying is that we can have access to all those other spaces and, and, and short-term access. It's not even long-term access. <clears throat> the, the idea of a 5,000 square- Excuse me, Michael, space. we have to wrap yes. it up. Yeah, sure, let sure. me just, Michael, can I, ju can I just say this by way of clarification? Because I yeah. understand the point in reference to one organization, but and I'm, I'm, I'm actually not clear on what the obligation actually exactly says, but, but I think that what Columbia has communicated, that they have to make an agreement with, with, with somebody. So I would say that um, whereas the West Harlem Arts Alliance recognized collaborations and partnerships, et cetera, that, excuse me, maybe in the resolution, we can make it clear that our real purpose, our only purpose really in uh and and accessing and, and managing the space would be on behalf and in the service of uh the arts organizations and, and artists 
and community members of uh, Community District 9 for whom this uh, this space is supposed to be made accessible. And so that 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 if that could be made more explicit in the resolution, maybe it would address uh, the concerns you've expressed. That's a good point, Mike. We could take a look at that um, as an amendment to what's already been written. Yeah, I mean, it could go in there anywhere. But I think that that that's the bottom line. That's that's why West Harlem Arts Alliance wants the space. They want the space on the behalf of the community. Not it's not just we're a service organization. We're not really trying to compete with any of the other organizations that we have in our community. That's not the point. The point is service to those organizations to help them provide professional development. Uh, it's Thank you. Um, yeah. And if you want to send the friendly amendment, if you want to draft something and send it, please feel free. Yes. Walter? Thank you for that. This is a quick question. It's just a curiosity. Not sure if it's affiliated with this, but Columbia has an arts building behind the forum. Uh, is that just for students or is that for the community? Uh, my, uh, I believe that's not only for the wall. I mean, if you're talking about the wallet gallery and the space above the wallet gallery, uh, I know that members of the communities and, you know, as you know, I, I'm a longstanding member of the community mm -hmm. and I'm also uh, one of the organizers of the HDSC coalition. And we've had meetings there. We have meetings at the uh, at this space above the wallet gallery, as well as in the uh, 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 at the forum. So they, they have made those spaces available to the community. No, there's a building behind that building where the forum is, and, it, and it's, when you go past it, it says art something something something. The, the Lenfest, yeah, the Lenfest Center. The, yes, the, is the that Lenfest. what you're referring to? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's for the community. Thank you. Uh, uh, members of the community have used that space, and I'm only saying that because mm -hmm. the HDFC coalition used it right uh, in 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 uh, uh, March of 2020 one of the last meetings that was conducted by our, the late, great April Tyler. Uh, and that was at the Lenfest Center. All right, thank you very much. My, I have one question. Um, Michael um, Palma, could you send the last communication with Columbia and what their response was so that we can indicate, see that, you know, what you've done to request the space and how they have not for, you know, been responsive or that they uh, haven't provided space? Uh, we have not had email communica communication. We've had uh, phone call conversations. Was and there anything we, in writing? Anything in writing? Uh, I would have to go back and check. Um, okay. But realize that the communication was not only was with us, it was also with the West Harlem Development Corporation. As the West Harlem Development Corporation. And there's anything that was documented, that's all. Anything that was documented that would really help substantiate that the reach, that at least we reached out prior and they and we haven't received uh, uh, adequate responses yet. Okay. Sure, sure. I, I think uh, between myself and, and the West Harlem Development Corporation, we can we can And if you can uh, get that to us by by Thursday. Um, yes, I, I, I would say please don't don't wait for something very explicit oh, yeah, yeah, because right. most of the com most of the converse, most of the communication okay. has been if via you phone. Have, just send it. Thank you. Um, is excuse me. I, I would like to know if we if we because I I'm trying I want to track the where the resolution goes if we are able to provide a. A friendly amendment uh, with, resp with respect to the use of the space, as indicated by Michael Unthank. <clears throat> can we, uh, Victor, can we, or Daria, can we anticipate that the friendly amendment can be incorporated and it would, uh, the resolution would go to its next step? And this is your part of the. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, uh, forgive me. Excellent. Tina is, Tina is part of the, is Senator uh, Cordell? No, he had a question. He had a question. Michael Palmer says, if the amendment, friendly amendment is added to the resolution, will it take the next step in the process? Um, it will be presented to the board and the board will make a decision whether it will be brought up for the general meeting. We'll let you know the decision, okay? Great, no, because I, I'd like to know that, um, 
if we have to have community, community members attend the executive committee and have members of the community attend the general committee, uh, we would like to uh, let them know that this issue is being uh, addressed and that their concerns are being heard. Sorry, it's so loud. I'm going to see if we can do something about it. Yeah, okay. All right. Sorry. So you'll be in contact. Okay, we'll be in contact. Thank you. Um, very good. Is, Thank you very much. Is Senator Clear, Clear are you here as, as yet? Senator Cordell Clear, Representative, are you here? No. Okay. Joking. Next person on the agenda uh, 140, 43rd Gold Aces. Gold Aces. Yes, hello, hello, hi, hi everyone, hi everyone at CB9. Uh, first off, I want to thank you guys for helping me out at the block party on 143rd. Uh, Dario was there, Monique was there, Miriam was there, and it was an incredible feeling to be a part of the community and everybody kind of coming together and uh, uh, just being there. Uh, it was very exciting, uh, very fulfilling for me. I mean, I was out there working, but I mean, working for us is is better than just working, you know, working, I guess, right? Um, um, uh, while I was there, uh, what was that? May I introduce you before you start? Okay. Um, I just I, I just would like to introduce Carl. Carl is a community member, as he said, he's lived here his entire life. Uh, we did the, the um, cannabis task force has been in close contact with Carl for the last few months. Uh, since we met him, he's kept in very close contact with us. He was having a um, his annual block party on 143rd Street, and we went out to support him this year. This is something that he does for the community every year. He's been doing it for years and years, and Carl um, is, as he said, dedicated to the community, and he actually wants to expand into an arts project for the community. And that's why I invited him to come. Go ahead, Carl. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Uh, once again, I'm Carl. Um, so um, when we was at the Black Party, I was discussing with Daria about uh, creating some kind of music festival, an arts festival for the community. Um, I believe that uh, this community has a lot of good history and we have a lot of space especially outdoor space um, uh, to utilize. Um, and I don't think it's that hard. I just think a uh, uh, key word is us. You know, we have uh, people in the community, if we get together and 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 focus on, on what we want and what we want to see, I think we could create something very, very special in our community and for the entire city, uh, you know, because everybody loves music and art and, just different type of aspect in, in those points. And I think if we come together, we create something. Um, I was talking to Daria about the space uh, over there on, on 138 in Riverside, going under where they have the, the food festival. Um, but um, thinking from then, I think we could do a lot more. I think we might be able to use the park as well and kind of have it more naturalistic, uh, not just music, but have nature a part of it. Um, going all the way to 148, you know, we could use 125th all the way to the park on 148 and just bring in a lot of music, art, uh, different businesses from the community, uh, just doing a lot of different things. We have a lot of things in our community that we uh, need to uh, tap into and, and bring out. And I think that we can create something very, very special, not just for us, but for, like I said, for Harlem, for uh, the whole city, just to come out and once a year, once a year, I think once a year, I think we deserve once a year to just let loose, you know, of, of all the, the buildup that happens, you know, the city's rough, you know, and we deal with a lot. I, you know, I myself deal with a lot. Every, we all do, you know, we got to go out there every day and deal with, you know, what, what is being created and we all are creators. So I think we could create uh, 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 something special and great. And something that taps into all of our um, our different cultures as humans, not just, but humanity. You know, we have many different cultures. We have, you know, the tribal, we have uh, uh, the Asian, you know, we have uh, the Northern Eastern, the communities change a lot. I think that we tap into all those different aspects and bring a, a 
some type of gathering together, I think it will be it will be great. I mean, if you're with it, you know, I'm here. You know, um, you know. Uh, oh, you know uh, thoughts? Sorry. You are. Um, well, you, as I said, when I invited you to come and thank you for for coming, um, you're in the right place <laughs> for for something like that, because at the discussion you just heard um, with um, the two Michaels, that's actually they are. You, you probably got it, but you haven't been here to hear the whole thing. The West Harlem Arts Alliance, which is a new organization that has just been formed to support, promote the arts and artistic endeavors. So there's a lot. That's why we do the introductions at the beginning of the meeting as well to uh, connect people. We're connectors. We don't... Um, as an organization, that is our strength, is to be able to uh, advocate and connect um, so that we can get things done. I would love to continue the conversation with you. Um, if anybody, does any, uh, do you have anything specific, any questions or any um, uh, concerns, Carl, or is it still in the preliminary? Like, do you have anything specific that you, might uh, have a question about how to get done or anything like that? Or do you um, want to just kind of develop uh, the idea? Um, well, like I said, uh, having my experience with the Black Party, you know, trying to have uh, a basis of, um, well, for the Black Party, what should be spent kind of to organize, um, I do, have a couple of things that you know I have thought of you know uh you know with these events if, if we're going to consider it um so uh to do these kind of events you need teams you need separate teams um so yeah I need teams I need people that are really trying to come together that's that's the main thing um I'm still doing my block party every year on 143rd street so um but um, like I said, we have a lot of space. You know, I believe the park department, they do ask for permits. Um, there is a fee. I don't know what the fee is yet. Um, you know, we just need money if, you, if we are going to do it. And, you know, and, you know, I'm, I want to do it that it's free, which is, um, I know it's going to take a lot, but if it could be free, that, that's... Michael are, is is this something that um, that the West Harlem Arts Alliance might be able to um, help or in any way? Uh, I, I didn't hear the whole concern, but uh, we are here ready, willing, and able to help everyone and anyone who asks for help. And to the extent that we have the capacity to help in any substantive way, we are at your disposal. Oh, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mr. Palmer, Michael. Um, so if I need this to 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 get space, let's say uh, 125th Street, uh, the street down there to to create this festival, I could talk to you to get space. Or right now, uh, what we're trying to do, especially with our resolution, is have Columbia Uni University recognize the fact that WHAA is the organization that you would talk to. But unless we pass this resolution, I would say that your best bet, and we would support your application, is to make an application directly with Columbia, and we would support you to the extent that we, you know, can can vouch for you. It, it, you know, Columbia University is looking for an organization that can vouch for applicants, right? But, and so they don't want to do the due diligence; they rather that we do the due diligence. Carl, Carl, excuse me, Michael. Yes. Uh, you're trying to get space to do a festival on 125th Street. Is that what you're talking about? In the plaza, right? I'm trying to get a music festival. Or Where? Different. Where? Uh, I mean, I was I was thinking 138 where they do the food festival. You know? Oh, that's uh, not Columbia University. <clears throat> yeah, he's not talking about Columbia. Yeah, I mean, we would, yeah. you know, I think the West Harlem Arts Alliance, with, we're in a, you know, we are dedicated to Hamilton Heights in West Harlem. 
but yeah. sure we'd love you know we'd be happy to work with you to try to help you identify a space and any um any kind of uh technicalities or bureaucracy that you might have to approach yeah. and give some advice on that and give and assist absolutely that's what we're in business. For, yeah for, for example information did you put your contact information put the, we put the contact information in didn't we yeah and we'll yeah um, yeah they, they can reach they can speak out reach out to me we have supported organizations who at the last minute, especially on June 30th, needed to comply with uh, city grants. And we were able to skip a lot of, ha have them you know, bypass a lot of the requirements in order to accommodate them at, in city parks. So we work very closely with parks. And, and we were able to vouch for them. We were able to say, hey, listen, you know, uh, we'll work with them, make sure everything is. And basically, they were able to use the auspices of WHAA to do their projects. And I'm pretty sure that maybe we can come to the same accommodation. With re I thought, uh, uh, sorry, my apologies. I thought you meant the plaza space in front of the Lentfest Center, which is, I believe, still public space or has public access. <clears throat> but I thought you were more, more, more interested in those areas. If you're talking about street space, uh, we'll help you as much as we can with the city uh, and making that happen. Why don't we talk about it offline and take each other's um, contact yeah. information? Um, everybody's sure. contact information is in the chat. Sure, Daria, and what's your number, Daria? Is it that in the chat too? My phone number? Yeah. I'll put it in there. Great. Thanks. The chat, public information. Yeah, send it to him. Michael, Michael. Uh, yeah, just send it. In, no, say, yeah, send in a direct message to me. Thanks. Okay. And and uh, and Carl, uh, or I'm sorry, who was it that was speaking? Uh, Carl. 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 I. I uh, yeah, give me a call tomorrow. Let's talk about your your ideas and plans. I, uh, one of uh, my expertise is that I've worked with so many city agencies over the years that I can probably help you navigate that and support you in whatever way you can. Can you um? Email me your info, just in case. Yeah, I think I'll, it's, I'll, it's in the I'll, chat. Yeah, it's in the I'll chat. Get, I'll send you all their information. If Great. you want, I'll, I'll direct message it to you right now in the chat. And also, if I needed to work with like sanitation and all of those people, NYPD. Um, that would be community I'm just just for future because I know we got to get the space first, but. Um, things of that nature. Is there someone I can speak to here? Or? That would be a community board. That would be us. So take the first steps. Contact Michael Palmer. When we get to that, we can handle police, fire, sanitation, permits, all of that. And right. I think the suggestion okay. Michael Palmer also made about the plaza uh, is a good one to take a look at. That's a nice space to um, do an outside art speak. So Michael Palmer is that the The plaza is located where? That Mike, what's the exact? That is. Uh, I believe that's one. Uh, technically, you know, that's a good question. I think it's one thirty-first. Yeah, I think it's like one twenty. Yeah, there's some streets that get lost there. Uh, I would like to say one. It's at the it's at Columbia at the Columbia site, but we can yeah. follow up on that. We can follow up on that tomorrow when you talk to yeah. Michael. Great. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, right. everyone. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Uh, Daria. Thank you. Thank you. Ten plus and sure thing, Carl. Part of the community. I appreciate you know you considering Thanks for your work, uh, Carl. this whole thing to happen. Thank you very much. You guys have a good night. You too. Okay. Um, that's the end of the presentation. Mm -hmm. Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. We have Brian Pinchot. Yeah, I apologize. Hi. I was added late. I um I didn't um explicitly um confirm that I had received your message I apologize uh but but yeah I'm I'm a I'm an educator at the Hispanic Society Museum and Library we're on 155th and Broadway which is technically in CB12 but just barely and uh after some years of closure we're increasingly having a lot more programming we're having a lot more exhibitions so we want to start you know updating the community on or the committee on a more regular basis um, you know, I work in the Department of Education and, and Community Engagement. So, um, you know, I'm hoping you'll see me as a contact in combination with our, our head of education, uh, my boss, Natalie Espino, um, so that we can, you know, so that you can have access to us and that we can stay connected 
to what's happening um, in the committee. Um, and this is particularly is a good time for us uh, to check in because we really have a large amount of activities that are coming up um, with the reopening of some exhibition spaces and then also in combination with Hispanic Heritage Month, which starts in just a few days. Um, like I said, we've been closed on and off for probably, you know, probably like at least five years, seven years. We've been going through some partial reopening. And, um, you know, I think I should say that um, we at the Hispanic Society, this cycle are probably gonna, going to have the most, um, the largest amount of artworks on view that we've had in in a very long time. We have an exhibition that's starting on Friday of the Mexican muralist Jose Clemente Orozco. We've got our main gallery open again, an exhibition that we're calling Collection Without Borders. We've got Spanish old masters, you know, El Greco, Goya, Velazquez. We've got our monumental Sorolla murals that are going to be open again. Well, they are open again. Um, and, and also a selection of uh, a decorative arts. And I also just want to mention, you know, like I said, and I'm, I hope that, you know, you'll have me back next month, so I won't go too far into the future. But as far as programming, there's a couple of things that I want to highlight uh, specifically just to kind of promote, but also to kind of, you know, show, you know, some of the, the things we have going on. This Saturday, we have a Mexican, uh, an event for, uh, to celebrating Mexican independence. And that's with one of our dear partners, Mano a Mano. And I'll share the link for that. So that anyone you know in the community can show up. There's going to be art making. There's going to be live music, <clears throat> and that's this Saturday. We also have um, an outdoor film series that we have going on all month. Uh, we had our first one, uh, our first uh, outdoor film in partnership with uh, Inwood Artworks, and that's that went last Thursday. And our next two is on the 21st and the 28th, and those mm -hmm. are um, films that are in Spanish with English subtitles. We've got um, <clears throat> an Almodovar film, uh, Women on the uh, Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, followed by a children's film, Coco, at the end of the month uh, on the 28th. So that's, you know, that's my, my pitch. We've got a lot of exhibitions that are gonna be happening in the next six months. <clears throat> we'll have a lot to report. And we have it. Oh, and I, you know, I should say all of our programming, all of our exhibitions are always free and open to the public. So that's good to keep in mind. So I will, I will share those links. And of course, you know, like I say, keep in touch and uh, I can answer any questions you might have. Brian, Give your address one more time. Our address? <laughs> I just need the address. Yeah. Yeah, we're 155th and Broadway. Do you want the, uh, Never mind. Uh, that's good. Brian, we're part of the Arts and Culture Committee. We have a liaison group, the Dissemination of Arts and Culture, and we disseminate information that is pertinent regarding art, anything artistic or culturally related. And I added myself and Walter T. Alexander's email information. Email us the information and we will send it out to the distribution list. That is that is great. Thank you. And Ryan, you did add your information. I'm sorry, I don't see it. <laughs> it could be there, I just don't see it. Yeah, my information, it's uh I can re do it again. If it's there, that's all that matters. No, no, no. If you say it's there, it's fine. Yeah, it's up in the chat. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. But if you want anything sent out that's community related regarding arts and culture, just send it to the two email addresses that's there. Okay, perfect. Does anyone have any questions for Ryan? Okay, I think that's the end of our presentations. So the next we're going to go item on the agenda is old business. You know what? Can we do new business first? Because I think it'll be faster. And then old business because it's then everybody everybody who's not interested can sign off of old business. Would you? Okay, good. Yeah.
do. It's fine. But your new business. Oh, okay. <laughs> new business. Okay. Um, this is a lot of housekeeping. Um, any guests, feel free to leave if this is anything that you're not, you know, want to stay for. But, you know, this is public information. If you want to stay, you're more than welcome. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, minutes and secretarial assignments. Anyone that's a member of the Arts and Culture Committee, we have a responsibility to generate minutes. Um, I sent out an email and I did some assignments as well. Um, Tiago, um, do you have, Tiago, uh, let's see, is there anyone else? Okay, I'm thinking of someone, something new, someone new that joined. Um, it was Tiago, Edwin, and a woman. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Sharon. Sharon. Mm -hmm. Is Sharon? She's not. She's not here. Is um. Um, Edwin on? Torres. He's not, he's not on the screen. I think he was. I don't think that this was no. correct. No? no? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tiago, which which month would you like to do minutes? <laughs> what are the options? Um, you, I think anyone would exchange with you. So any month that makes you feel good. From now until June. From now until June. Okay. And I'm I'm going to do the minutes this month. You can use that as a template for your minutes as well. Okay. I'm just well, I would prefer maybe any month after January would be best. Because then I'm any gonna be yeah. So March, April, May, June, correct? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Can we pick one? Um, I'll send it out because I already have it for everyone. So oh, I'd okay. rather just, you know, and anyone that I assign to, I'd rather take one from. Okay. Um, the next thing is liaison assignments. We are liaison to several committees. One is the dissemination of arts information, which is Walter and I. If anyone else is interested, please let me know. The West Harlem Arts Alliance. And as a as a um, liaison, you are responsible for going to meetings, finding out what's going on, and giving a report the following month of what transpired. So we do not have a um, a uh, person that's volunteered for the West Hall of Arts Alliance. Victor would like us to do that. So we can that. Yeah. Let's do us and one other person because we're, we're doing a lot. Any, does anybody want to volunteer? Anybody? Going once, going twice. All right. Um, the Community Benefits Agreement. Um, Carlton, I think that you're on that committee. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. Does anybody want to join Carlton? Please. Hi. Hi. Yeah, did you get my apologies in the chat? Yeah. What did you say? Did you did you see his apologies in the chat? Yes, we did. Yes, yes we did. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so Carlton, um, you'll have the community benefits agreement and you can contact Victor for more information regarding that and you'll go to their meetings as well, correct? Okay? I will do, yes. And you'll, give a, and you'll give a report at each arts and culture. Hold, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> I can, I can, if they, if Carl, Carlton puts his email, I don't know if his email is there, I can send them the CBA right now. Carlton, Carlton 64G. Can you can you type it in there in the chat, Carlton? Sure. Okay, great. Thank you for being and thanks, Michael, for being so helpful. RKO Absolutely. Task Force, RKO Task Force. We have Walter and Ilana. So that's taken care of. 
Is there any other committees, the committees that I mentioned, is anyone in, going once, going twice? This is the last time. Dissemination Arts Information Committee, West Harlem Arts Alliance, Community Benefits Agreement, RKO task, um, task updates. Anyone interested in any, we don't, if you want to uh, be a part of, if you want to attend, if you want to provide information at the monthly meetings, we greatly appreciate your participation. Now, I'm not going to go over month by month, but it's some folks didn't um, volunteer, so they were assigned meeting minutes, months. Are there any discrepancies with what you were assigned? You received an email. Do you have any problems with the month you are assigned? And what that means is you agree to, to um, take the minutes, send out the minutes, make adjustments when needed. And if you're not able to do the minutes for the month that you agree to, that you're going to have to find, it's your responsibility to find an, alter, an alternate person to do your men, the minutes for the month that you were assigned. Are there any questions about that? Did everyone receive the email with the time, with the months they were assigned? The uh, please. I'm not you, Tiago, because you just came yeah. tonight. <laughs> yeah, I assume. And I assume so. And you'll, you'll, you'll be assigned the month after February, and I'll, I'll send it out again to everyone. And Thank Tiago, you. could you please make sure you put your email address in the chat? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, funding request community goals, commit, committee goals. Um, before we do that, may I? Sure. Uh, thank um, uh, Harlem Arts Advocacy. Yes. Yes. Um, so, on to another page. Let me go back there. So, um, October is. Yeah, and I, as you were talking, I just, my ADD just went for a walk somewhere else. Here it is. Uh, October is uh, Harlem Arts Advocacy. Um, and it is sponsored by the Harlem Arts Alliance. Um, I want to get it. Sorry, I'm trying to go here. Oh, here it is. Oh, um, I sent the, I sent the flyer to Madison so she could put it up and see this. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, Harlem Arts Advocacy Month. It's October first through the twenty third. Um, there will be the Harlem Arts Alliance is. Basically, making uh, arts a priority um, in October, and they're asking for key organizations to add to their Harlem Arts Advocacy calendar. Um, they're asking us to uh, turn in our list by the 15th. So, I'm asking anyone on the board any of the artists or arts organizations who are present um, who have um, things going on in terms of the arts that you would like added to that calendar to please let us know so that we can add it um, to their calendar uh, as I guess sort of sponsored, not sponsored, but you know, uh, put forth by community uh, board members. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm talking. Is it for? So. Is it just anything happening between the first and the, the October first and the twenty, whatever? Yes, but um, the thing is, if if there is a specific uh, event or something that's happening in October, they can feature that. They can also feature, let's say, an organization, for instance. Say, for instance, we want to. Um, have one of our things be the West Harlem Arts Alliance. We can put that forth 
to bring uh, attention to uh, this new organization and the fact that we are backing the organization and we want to bring um, attention to it. Okay, what we you can send that to the dissemination of arts and information, and we can send it up to our distribution list and just ask them if anyone is having anything between these dates. You know, put the specifications yeah. on it. If you could write that up and send it to us, that'd be great. And we'll mm -hmm. just send up the I'll send it up. <laughs> and uh, specifically, uh, Michael, if you have anything going on, um, uh, through West Harlem Arts Alliance, we would love to uh, have that added as well. Yeah, uh, Di, I, Di, I will tell you that, um, and and uh, maybe at some point I can, maybe in a, in a phone call conversation tomorrow, I can up, update the particulars of this and you and Tina uh, on this, is that we are creating our website right now we are going to have the long awaited artist directory as part of our website and we yes. are also going and we are also going to have a, an arts calendar uh, where in the, people can just put their own information own events on the calendar and it will be there already online it'll be a little bit like how uh, Harlem one stop does it i really don't want to duplicate what they do per se so we're going to try to make it a little different uh, but the other exciting bit of news is is that we are going to have an artist, an arts organization directory, whereby anyone who's looking for an actor, a singer, a web designer, a photographer, uh, anything like that, can look it through, uh, look it up through the directory, and you can search by those hashtags. And so we're working on that right now. We're hoping to have our our full website up and running by uh, the end of the month, if not early October. Uh, as you can imagine, this is something that takes a lot of time putting together, but it's already in the works. It's already happened. The, the consultants have been paid and they are working on it right now. And we're going to see a mock-up of it sometime this week. So mm -hmm. hopefully that this will be online sooner rather than later. And instead of the Harlem Arts Alliance advertising events for West Harlem, we will be doing that for our own community. Yeah, Wonderful. The, one, the one thing that we um, are, are hoping to do with your organization with the advent of the West Harlem Arts Alliance is not have us all be on an island. Absolutely. And definitely to, to cross pollinate. Um, absolutely, absolutely. No, certainly that's the spirit, has always been the spirit, uh, you know, of the arts in general to collaborate with each other. We don't want to duplicate, you know, we, want, we all don't want to be doing the same thing and, and causing confusion either, but right. certainly this cross pollinating. Yes. Go ahead. No, no, no. Certainly uh, complementing each other, uh, providing more information, clear information for members of our community, especially those who want to hire uh, artists from West uh, Harlem uh, and points beyond, uh, as well as publicizing events that happen in in, 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 in West Harlem, uh, which has been sort of the bane uh, of West Harlem's existence from day one, right? Uh, we're sort of, uh, uh, sort of, as we say, as, as the French say, vague terrain, uh, a very vague area. And the West Harlem Arts Alliance is committed to not making it so vague anymore. All right, thank you. Um, oh, which, I'm sorry. <laughs> so many questions, Michael. Um, how will people uh, will how will people get on your um, uh, your database? Do they just we're, go? Yeah, we're go going ahead. to do a a big campaign to both on social media and through a constant contact or you know direct email and advertising in the newspaper uh, about this free service for West Harlem artists. And they can just uh, fill out a form, uh, select the categories, uh, put links to their own website where they can show their wares, show their services. And anybody, because I get calls every, almost every day, hey, I need, I need three actors. I need an actor of this, you know, I need an actor, or I need a designer, I need a web designer, I need this. And I, and I provide them that information. But as you can imagine, I get very, you know, it gets to be a bit much after a while. And so wouldn't it be nice? 
And I know that C the community, uh, the arts and culture committee has been trying to do this for since I was chair of the of community board arts and, uh, arts uh, arts committee, is is to try to create this service, this directory whereby people can put their own information by filling out a form. It will be vetted and approved by WHA for appropriateness, obviously, you know. Uh, and then have a great database of all these sort of arts resources and services available for anyone in New York City and even outside of New York City to, to access uh, artists from 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 West Harlem to to either employ as musicians, singers, dancers, web designers, whatever uh, part of uh, arts related uh, services that can possibly be be defined and people can possibly look up and, and want to hire. Thank you. Um, Michael, I think we've talked about this very briefly before. The arts organizations tend to um, be very protective of their artist directory. And I know you're talking about going out like to um, Kansas to, to the artists more directly, but if there's a way to work with the arts organization to get their directory, that would be so, so helpful. Well, I, I, I'm less interested in getting the directory of arts organizations as getting arts organizations to be part of the directory. Someone like HSA, who provides vital services to our community, should be listed in the in the in the oh, directory. Yes. And we, can help with that. we have a lot of art organizations. We just don't have a lot of artists in our directory. Right, and the idea is to we get them themselves. To, yeah, 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 yeah. It, to get them themselves. I, I don't want people to all of a sudden find they're on a directory only because they were part of an organization. They should, uh, of their own volition, put themselves out there. I, I don't think I would like to, you know, take or you know people's uh, information and put it out there without their permission or say so. Uh, you know, they, it should be, they should voluntarily offer that service. And, or be, you know, it, basically for all those of us who remember, we're going to be like the yellow pages of, uh, of art services in West Harlem, where you can look things up by category and get a whole listing of artists that, that, that fall within that category. I, I I don't know if Madison even knows what yellow pages are. Do you, Madison? <laughs> Thank you, Michael. And we're going to go Turn with it. funding requests and community goals. Um, okay. I wasn't sure whether goals was under old business or new because we have both voices. Exactly. Um, I did have my hand up for a quick question. Can I? May oh, I be recognized? So sorry. <laughs> I know, I had to find it myself. Okay, Mr. Palmer, uh, we had talked about that earlier this year. Um, would that, with the directory, would that also include like performances or things that they're going to do or will be doing? Because we'd like to maybe interface our listings with yours eventually. Sure. Uh, one is a directory. The other is a calendar. And we're going to have both. We're going to have a directory, which is, like I mentioned earlier, is just a perfunctory listing of artists and the services that they provide, as well as arts organizations and other organizations that provide services to artists in the directory. In the calendar is going to be more like a calendar of events. So those are, are going to be two different sections in our website. Uh, and I think that um, the the calendar would be more of a of a calendar listing of events in West Harlem. So if anybody wants to visit West Harlem, we're trying to make West Harlem a destination. That's great. That's and great. and anybody who wants to come and say, hey, listen, I'm interested in uh, in, in seeing what is happening as for Hispanic Heritage Month in West Harlem. Well, our calendar would have a whole listing of Hispanic Heritage Month events, or Black History Month, or Black, uh, yeah, Black History Month, and uh, and have a whole listing of things that are happening in West Harlem. The idea is to is is for people to uh, see what is happening not only in East Harlem or in Central Harlem, but over here in West Harlem. Okay, so we so our, we can we can send our listing to you to add to your calendar as well, right? <laughs> Yes, and we'll talk and about the, the logistics. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. Making, and, yeah. and 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 the thing is, is that it's going to be organized or designed in such a way that you can do it yourself. You don't have to send it to us. Very good. That's great. Yourself. That's yeah, great. Yeah. It'll work. Yep. 
Thank Michael, you, Walter. Michael, do you plan on doing e-blast as well or just a calendar? No, we plan to do, yes, we, we always do e, planning to do e-blast and also have a so, obviously a very uh, uh, vigorous uh, social media presence. Okay, thank you. And our next topic is funding and com committee goals. Um, and the last thing to say on this Arts Advocacy Month, um, Madison is putting in the chat right now the email. If you have any events going on in October, you can send them um, also directly there and to the artist. Information dissemination, dissemination. Of <laughs> and culture information <laughs> exactly <laughs> all the <Yeah>. things <laughs> all the things okay um, so the next thing is funding requests this year our funding requests are due early that's what they told us in June in June that um, funding requests would be uh, early. And um, so I just wanted to start talking about it now. Um, every year, it is our mandate to um, look at what's going on in the um, district and identify our goals, our needs, our wants. Um, Are there any financial limitations? Like, what's what's the what's the range for funding? No, or anything? There, no, there are cap, there are capital funding requests, and there are what's the other discretionary? One? Yeah, no, 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 not discretionary. Um, discretionary is is totally different. We're talking about the big things like um, and art center, and that that would be something of capital request. Mm -hmm. um, major requests for funding, things, big and small actually, things that we need um, in terms of arts and culture. Uh, I put this on the agenda as funding requests slash goals because um, I think they go together. A lot of times when we start talking about funding requests, um, they don't tend to change because if we didn't get our art center that we needed last year, we still need it this year. And so I found that in all the years that I've been on the community board, they tend to stay the same. Um, for me though, it being wrapped up in goals might freshen the conversation, so to speak. Um, one of the things that I would like to talk about in terms of goals. And I hope we can actually like discuss this because sometimes, sometimes um, this conversation or when you ask things about funding, it just, it, nobody has anything to say. Um, for me though, I have a goal that in arts and culture, all we ever talk about is arts. We forget about the culture part. And West Harlem is huge on culture. The, you know, a lot of the culture, there are so many cultural things in the United States, even if that culture is arts related, like jazz or, or that sort of thing. Um, a lot of that stuff actually started in West Harlem or was the hub of it. Uh, Sugar Hill, for instance, is where, you know, a lot of the, the great minds and the artists and the jazz musicians and the thinkers and the writers actually lived during the Harlem Renaissance and beyond that. Uh, West Harlem is the home of a lot of uh, performers a lot of the Broadway community lives in our lives in our community. There's um, there are cultural pursuits, and this this neighborhood is so diverse. That's part of culture as well. And we um, I see that Joyce, our former chair, uh, Joyce Adewumi is is on the meeting, and she actually has a cultural festival every year. And she's always has held up the light in terms of culture. 
but it is something other than her that we rarely discuss. Um, so in terms of goals for this year, I would like um, us to consider and um, possibly, you know, start a conversation about how we can actually incorporate culture in whatever that might mean. I don't even know what it means necessarily. Um, uh, and how we, you know, how it does enter the conversation, but I think that it should. Questions, comments? Well, does anyone have any comments regarding in what she was with, what the, the adding the culture part and what part of culture you think we could basically concentrate on? Absolutely. And you know, uh, not part of it. Well, I, I want to hear I'm it. I'm teasing myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. Joyce, did you want to say something first? No? Go ahead, no. Michael. Oh, okay. Michael. Yeah, culture has been, is, you know, people forget the culture part of arts and culture when we talk about arts and culture committee. And we, we grappled with that um, issue from day one of, of uh, the creation of the arts and culture <laughs> committee, which was first created under the chairmanship of Jordi Reyes Montblanc. And which is, is, is to say, it wasn't always a forever committee. It didn't, it, it's a, a very, very relatively recent phenomenon in, in the history of Community Board 9. But mm -hmm. culture, you know, we took it to mean, you know, a lot of the things we see, feel, hear, and, and intake as we walk across our, our community. And one of the biggest aspects of culture is the food that you find here in, in CB9. And Daria, to your point, you know, are the the culinary uh, selection you have here in West Harlem is as diverse as the community is, and certainly you know those at you know uh, uh, the you know food you know what you hear the rhythms the sound the music that you hear just you know from stoop to stoop is certainly part of the culture and what happens on the street on a day to day basis especially on those long weekends that's culture. <laughs> Right? It may not be artistic, but that's culture. And so, you know, we always wanted to underscore, you know, from day one, though that aspect that is unique to our community that speaks directly to, uh, to culture that does that you will not find anywhere else, really, in any part of the city. You don't find it in central Harlem. You won't find it in East Harlem, but you'll find it in West Harlem. And those are the things that, you know, certainly as, as head of the West Harlem Arts Alliance, we also want to promote, you know, uh, something like uh, what the Uptown Night Market does certainly speaks to culture on 12th Avenue on, on uh, every Thursday of the month uh, uh, certainly speaks to that. And, and and they feature obviously musicians and artist acts on stage, but, you know, all the vendors there provide uh, food and uh, that really sp speaks directly to the people in our community. You know, that's where the food comes from, not only West Harlem, but also Central Harlem. So, so you know, for me, that's, that's, that's part of culture. We see it, live it, breathe it. Uh, every time we walk up and down Broadway, Amsterdam, uh, St. Nicholas Avenue from 110th Street to 157th, uh, 157th Street. So for me, that's, you know, certainly that falls within the purview of, of your committee. Uh, you know, those, you know, issues and aspects of our community falls under arts and culture and certainly will be a concern of WHAA. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with any of their view of culture in West Harlem? And what we what we could do to um, amplify it to show it off. So, good evening, everyone. Um, I was having tech issues when Michael was talking. Um, just want to say good evening. Um, it's great to join you guys at today's meeting. I've been listening closely to see what's going on. It's been a very very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. As we mentioned culture, let's also remember uh, attire, you know. Everybody knows what Joyce wears because she wears her culture. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, 
great, great stuff. Great meeting everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that is um, that thing, food, fashion. Um, the, another thing is history. I'm, I'm a big history buff and this neighborhood is just teeming with it. Everywhere you go, the, the empty lot next door to where I live, you know, there was a rundown church there. And I unfortunately didn't know until it was torn down that it was the place where they had Malcolm X's funeral. And they had it there because no one else would take the body next door to where I live. We just, we walk over it every day. We walk past it every day. And we just, we don't know. We don't, we either, we don't know about it or we don't think about it or a little bit of both. And I just, I challenge the committee to um, identify and, and just sort of keep in, in the forefront of your mind um, how we as a committee can uh, support, uh, ampl amplify um, culture as well as arts this season. Thank you. Okay, um, goals, and I think we went over this, did we go over discretionary funding? Are we back to old business? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, was there any more new business, anyone? Okay, yeah, um, old business goals um, and discretionary funding. Uh, we don't know how much we got for the year yet in terms of discretionary funding. For anyone who is new to the committee, we only get about $200 every year. <laughs> and we're over there to spend it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Last year we didn't spend it at all, though. So we, I mean, we're a thrifty bunch. <laughs> but um, this year we definitely do want to, you know, see what we can do with our little money. Um, Michael, one of the things I was thinking about was a database. But I don't, I don't want to waste money if that's something that you're doing, and we could work collaboratively. Yeah. No, I think you should. We're going to do that. Don't worry. We have funding, obviously, to do that. So if you can find, maybe use the two hundred dollars to invest in the culture aspect of arts and culture. I, I don't oh, know. Well, if, if, well, if, I'm, all, I'm, all I'm saying is I don't know what we're going to use it for, but it, developing a database isn't going to be necessary because you're handling. Uh, yeah. Yes, I, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think. Um, not to spend our, uh, you know, not to spend our, our little money so fast, but, and I think this actually may be something that is paid for by the board, the full board, uh, in general, but, uh, uh, Victor has talked about possibly showing some art in, um, in the business office. And then when we were here at the um, at the executive board meeting, I was looking at this big old wall. Yeah. And I was like, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it maybe this will be something. And I know that we had done before. Actual actually, before I get started, full disclosure, I we had this wasn't part of the conversation. And I said, and I asked him if I could show my art here. And he said, yes. And then I said, well, I can't just keep all this goody goodness for myself. Um, is there a possibility that we could um, do sort of, were you here when we were showing, when we were doing, we were dealing with artists um, a couple of years ago. Um, where we were, and Joy, actually Joyce started this, um, where we were, the WHDC used to have a training program and they were in a building about this size. It wasn't much bigger than this. And she actually did um, spearheaded a showing of artists. And we showed, how many artists did we show there, Joyce? About three, two or three? Um, we, we did 
several because we were repurposing space. Right. You know, we were repurposing space and we started from the libraries. Um, right. Repurposing their wall, using that as a place to uh, exhibit the artworks of um, some of the uh, artists in this community. And from there, we moved over to uh, WHDC space. So I think we probably had 10 about seven artists. Yeah, with the libraries and everything, yeah. yeah. And and that is, you know, space is one of those things and, you know, that's how this meeting started with yeah. us talking about space. Space is the one thing. We do have the outdoor space, as Carl was saying, um, and thankfully with with our parks and, and that sort of thing. But in terms of artist space, it is at a premium. So, um I think that any time that we can have a something like this with big old blank walls, that we could offer some opportunities. I don't, we'll have to decide whether we want to make it uh, a regularly scheduled kind of thing, or if we'll, you know, just play it by ear or whatever. But I just did want to put out there that, um, that, uh, there is a possibility that we can show some artists. I, 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 I love the idea. I mean, including there's no... Of, with, including restaurants in the area. And advertising, what they get out of it is we can advertise that they're showing local artists, which will bring more people to the restaurant and more people to see the art, and they can make the connection to maybe even purchase the art. Yeah, so that's the whole purpose. We used yeah. um, Tadmore's restaurant when, I know during that, that time. Yeah. yeah. So everyone on the Arts and Culture Committee, you can go around to your local restaurant and see if they would be willing to have a business use their walls for art, a local artist, and we would definitely promote them. Yeah. And so that's something in for them as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and everyone can work on that. Yeah. And it doesn't have to take up all of our time, but it can be something that we kind of do on an ongoing basis, especially when we eat out. And community yeah. work. Yeah. 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 And it that's... also gives, gives us a good reason to introduce ourselves with a lot of times we, we go places and I find myself introducing myself anyway especially if somebody has a liquor license or something like that I, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll introduce myself but sometimes we don't we don't think about it but I, I think that is a, a great opportunity for us to also um, connect because culinary as Michael was saying, is that that is uh, it's a culinary art, and it is culture as well. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I I love that idea. Thanks. All right, and anyone else with an, any any ideas, you can either send it to Daria and I, or we can just have a little time at the end of the meeting for brainstorming new ideas. And with that, if there's any any other questions, issues, concerns. A comment. Um, I I like the idea of the art on the walls. I'd like to suggest that we do it on a rotating basis. I would love to ask my seniors, who uh do who are very artistic, to contribute as well. I really want to engage them. And maybe we could have a a seniors month, like a month where that that we showed. Oh, it could be like their month. You know what I well, mean? Is we did the fair in May, so oh, May would yeah. be perfect. That's great. That's great. Is, is, I would love is there a seniors month? Mm -hmm. May. Uh, May? May. No, May. We do the senior resource fair in May. So oh. that's seniors oh, no, month. No, no. I, you know, if there's a seniors month, like there's a Hispanic month, there's a there's a Black History month. Is there a seniors month? Was told it's May. That's why it's we May. Did. May yes. is seniors month. Yeah, so we can do it then. I'm going to start engaging my seniors to get some artwork together. Okay. I would love to give them ample opportunity as well. Very good. Thank you much. H Hispanic Heritage Month begins on the 15th. That may be a bit too soon. It's a little too soon. Yeah, that, it's a little too soon, but I love the yeah. thought of it. And next, there's always next year. Yep. But I didn't Absolutely. know we were here. We might be gone. We might be leaving. <laughs> 
Nowhere to go. Okay. Okay. And does anybody? Well, I, if there's no other business. Sorry. It's Alana. I can't find the hand raise function on my app. I don't know. It disappeared. Hello. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't. It's it, the hand raise function disappeared. So I'm sorry to to just interrupt. Um, but I just I wanted to just throw something out there. Remember when we used to do um when we had the Harlem the, the lighted up festival. And they used to be in that space. I know it was through Harriet, but it was, we used to do, mm -hmm. uh, we had a night of activities for kids. And mm -hmm. I was just, you know, wondering how we can incorporate and we don't have that space anymore, but maybe we can do something again this year, maybe not with the light up, um, you know, um, celebration or maybe, but something for kids. I mean, you know, um, a lot of kids ha have ha had it really hard since the pandemic, during the pandemic. And I think art is very therapeutic. And, um, and, and it's great, you know, and I, and just to be hands on with things. So can we think about that too? Like do something that, sure. you know, can... okay, great. Sure. Good. sure. I, I, I'll make a pitch that on December 1st, we have our tree lighting event at Montefiore mm -hmm. Park, where we sing Christmas carols, not only the traditional English language ones, but also the traditional Spanish language ones. And so, um, uh, sometimes that would coincide with Harriet's event. I would rush from one to another. Uh, but uh, typically we have a, uh, a sing-along in front of the tree lighting, just like uh, at Rockefeller Center, uh, but, you know, in our small corner of the world. And then afterwards, we have a, uh, an eating festival where we have uh, Spanish soul food available for all the attendees at Broadway Housing Communities at 135th Street and Riverside. Get some art supplies and, and, and have the children have an opportunity to create something? That would be wonderful. Um, but I remember Harriet, what Harriet did was really involved. It was wonderful. Yeah, was wonderful. you know, let, let me just add, uh, I, I love the idea, but, and let me just, let me just say this. We that that was a big event that we did every year. Mm -hmm. We put our heart, soul, and minds, and you know our left foot in, into um, that event. Unfortunately, when it gets really elaborate, though, and maybe it won't be. I, I'm just I'm just adding in this thought. Um, maybe it won't be too much because it's actually your event, Michael. And if we just sort of jump in there, it won't be quite as involved. Um, for a while, this kind of turned into the, um, for lack of a better term, it, and we've been called the Arts and Crafts Committee. <laughs> now, I, 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 wanna, I wanna be, I think we have to be very careful that, you know, arts is not always for kids. I'm an artist, I, that's how I make my living. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are a lot of adults in this community who do, and we have a committee that deals with kids. So I think we have to be very careful how much, how much we fall into that. I'm happy to jump on with you, Michael. But I'm yeah yeah no I don't we don't do crafts at at the uh, at, at our <laughs> event but but I'm I'm in big I'm in favor of uh, preparing the next generation of artists in from West Harlem in whatever way we can do that not necessarily through crafts per se but in any uh, any way we can involve kids in the arts you know and in, in the arts for adults you know to a large degree that's what Sugar Hill Children's Museum does you know. But if there's some way that where we can do it, where we work together you know, on an event that could possibly accomplish all these, these these things, that would be wonderful. Yeah. So when do you start your planning? I'm sorry. Say that again. When, when do you start your planning for that event? Is it already underway? Yeah, we do it. As a matter of fact, I met with Joyce today about it, <laughs> just before the meeting. Can we, can we send you a liaison? Yeah, absolutely, 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 absolutely. I, I, uh, we restarted it last year, um, and we did it with um, 
uh, Miss Black, Gwendolyn Black, uh, for the first time in f three years because of COVID, right? Oh, I, oh no, eight, six years because the park was closed to um, because of construction. Uh, but come hella high water, we did it uh, last December. Uh, we didn't have a big crowd, a big turnout, but we did it, you know, just to say we did it. And this year we're looking to do it even bigger and better. Okay, so Lee, um, Ilana and or Tiago, could would you all, either one of you or both of you, be the liaisons to um, the Montefiore Park tree lighting with to Michael? I, I'd be interested. I I know Gwen. I I know she's done you know events with art and jazz, and um, I, I would love to do that. You know, mm -hmm. Tiago, could you work with Ilana as well? Yeah, and uh, Ilana, and I'll tell everybody that we're working with a lot of other people, with Joyce and with uh, a, a local development corporation, not WHDC, but another organization. And we work with the police department. We want, we, we obviously work with parks. Uh, so it's really a community event, you know? Amazing. So we'll um, put you both together, all three together, yeah, online. Would you, would you say yes? Yeah. Uh, we'll put you together offline yeah, and absolutely. we'll move forward on that. Thank you. Yeah, okay. look forward to it too. Um, All right, with that, if there's no other business, we are going to adjourn. We have hands time. raised. I see two that hands raised. Great. May I be recognized? <laughs> this is very simple. Um, you know, this is this area has really um changed and we need to be more inclusive. So I mean there's a really substantial uh, Asian community in this in this area now. So I'd like to, we just talked about the Blacks and Hispanics, but I want to make sure that uh, all, you know, ethnics are represented when we do things, because I don't want to leave anybody out. Very That's good. Feel free to invite them yeah. if you know anyone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Carl? Yeah, yeah, I just, um, going back to what he was saying about the tree lighting and the Christmas time and um, I've always had people come up to me, uh, especially on Broadway, because Broadway is a big stretch in this community. And Broadway itself in the name has history. And I'm I'm not trying to bring down any uh, uh, events. And like I, the tree lighting thing is great. Um, um, but Broadway is big. And I see all these other communities that have lights on their main like avenues. Um, so, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there maybe at some point. Uh, we could get lights on Broadway. I'm one that always saw like why um like Christmas Harlem has the, the banners and the lights. This is Harlem. Like like Harlem what lights. twenty like 125th Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Like, I, I believe Broadway deserves that. Broadway's the famous we have some money. You know, for the, Broadway has a history in New York. Broadway, the name Broadway. Um, I feel that we should get some lights on Broadway. I think it's about time. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, you know, just something to think about. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. It's on Broadway. Um, on Broadway. Broadway. Yes. I believe it'll bring more attention, more. That's a good, uh, you know what? Um, you said Harlem, Pub Harlem Public, um, our chair was just saying they like a part of the street. Maybe we could. Uh, talk to the different businesses, and they can even even if they can't do it alone, maybe they can collaborate to. Yeah, and maybe we can get them to do you know different ones down the yep. street. Yeah, I mean, like I said, yeah. there's a there's a huge there's, you know we got the islands in the middle. That's a great idea. Right. The yeah, islands. I don't, islands, I don't know if the park the parks own the islands in the middle of Broadway, right? No, no. Uh, actually, there's the Broadway Mall Association. Okay. That that works with uh, I think DOT. I think technically they're that's part of DOT. Yeah, I mean, uh, Victor, get... is that true? Um, I believe they are. I'm not 100 percent sure. They were, I thought they were private. No, I'm sorry. No, no. The Broadway Mall yeah, he, Association does. You have corrected me. They they're a private um, group. But we yeah, can. I think it's a great idea. We can look into it. Great. Like I said, Harlem Public lights up. One of the 148 to 149 part of that street mall. Yeah, yeah. And it looks great. So yeah, you get yeah. the local businesses involved. I think that would be a good thing. I love that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it would yeah. have to be, yeah. So thank you all for a lively meeting.
Excellent. And thank, thank you, you, Chair, for gracing us with your presence. We, thank you. And thank you, as always, Madison. Oh, yes. You're just wonderful. And thank you, to, uh, community um, uh, arts and culture committee members and, oh, and our visitors for, for attending mm -hmm. and staying on to the bitter end. Yeah. We mm -hmm. have really good one, everyone. And wait, we need a. Um, we need so a motion moved. to adjourn. So moved. And a second? Second. Thank okay. you. We are adjourned at. Good to see you, Joyce. Good night, everybody. everybody. Great to see everybody. Good to see you, Walter. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, Chicago. All right, All right. All right. All right. Michael. All right, All right, Joyce. Talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.